Um, my name is Ted Dahalski. I work for Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, and I'm an environmental health technical specialist uh, with an emphasis on lodging. And then I'm also the back, uh, backup for uh, campgrounds. Uh, Mary Ellen takes the lead for campgrounds, and then there's also Sam Fiscus who does pools. So those are kind of the three uh, contact points for DACAP. Um, but what, we're, what I'm going to be talking about today is this bed bug basics. Um, so when you walk out of here, you should be able to identify what they are, what they look like, and then some um, preventative maintenance that you can do um, at your facilities to prevent uh, an infestation of the bed bugs. Um, I don't really cover into uh, remediation um, items or, or ways to get rid of them because that's going to be better for the uh, professional pest control operator. You'd want to partner with them and contact them on how to get rid of them uh, from your facility. But at least you can raise that red flag and move forward with uh, contacting them. So again, uh, identification and preventative measures, um, we'll hit that. And then also conducting that investigation inspection. Uh, so I'll cover what we do as inspectors when we get a complaint from the public. Um, you can take that into your own facility. So if you get a complaint from a customer that says, hey, I think I was bit by a bed bug, um, you can go into your facility and do the same idea. Um, a lot of times people misidentify what a bed bug actually is. Um, so cross your fingers, that's what happens when you get that complaint. Um, and then lastly, I'll cover some resources. There's a ton of resources on the internet. Uh, they can go into further um, to find more information, but I'll point those out. Um, so an integrated pest management uh, plan is kind of a multi-sided uh, approach to taking care of your problem, which would be the bed bug. Um, so you want to be able to properly identify a bed bug. That's going to be something we'll cover. Um, next would be some prevention, um, exclusion, and um, exclusion techniques and pre prevention techniques to prevent uh, infestation. And then also you want to set an action threshold. Um, so ideally, if you see one bed bug, you want to put a plan in, in motion to get rid of them. Um, and it can be scalable, your control, and that's where you'd work with your pest control operator. Um, obviously, if you've got 10 bed, bed bugs that you find in a room, you don't want to just put out a monitoring trap. You want to amp up that uh, control method and either do a heat treatment or spray treatments or whatever is recommended by the pest control. If maybe you just find one, um, or none, maybe you just want to do a monitoring uh, technique instead, and we'll cover some of those. Uh, so bed bug biology and identification 101. Uh, Cymex lectularis is the common bed bug. The one down here is found, it's a tropical bed bug. It's found more in um, southern Florida or southern Texas, uh, but it doesn't mean that they can't migrate up here um, in suitcases or on people's luggage. Uh, so the bed bug starts out as obviously an egg, um, which is one millimeter in length, which is equivalent to three grains of salt. So they're very, very tiny. Um, once that hatches, it feeds on blood. Uh, it will then go from one stage onto the next. So these larval stages, they're called the instars. There's five of those. It'll feed, grow, feed, grow, feed, grow. Um, and kind of shed its skin like a snake in a sense um, and leave that little casting of skin um, behind, which is another sign that you'll, 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 you have bed bugs if you find that. And then eventually gets to that adult uh, size. And that can take anywhere uh, about two months in lab conditions. Um, and then a single female, assuming that she's had a blood meal and she's been mated, uh, can turn into 31,700 individuals within six months uh, because they do crossbreed within, within themselves as well. Again, that's lab conditions. That's being provided that food, uh, optimal growing conditions, but it can explode into some pretty uh, uh, bad conditions quickly. And then lifespan is between six to 12 months. Um, however, they can go up to 12 months without a blood meal, kind of in this dormancy um, before, before feeding again. So um, they can last even longer than 12 months. And I do have some specimens here um, that I'll pass out just so you have an idea. Yeah, what the, no, these are all dead. So there's one there. So this is, uh, these are the adult bed bugs. One there. 
So that just gives you kind of a size uh, comparison of what you'd expect them to be. And then this one here is this first instar. So I'll start over here and you can take a look. So this is that smallest stage, uh, one and a half millimeters, the egg is one millimeter. So the egg is going to be two thirds the size of this to give you an idea. So that little speck there is the first instar. So super tiny compared to your adult that you have in the other test tube. So if you don't mind just passing that around um, to the others. And then like I said, they feed exclusively on blood. Um, human blood is what they're going after. And they are hitchhikers, they don't fly, jump, or hop. Uh, so if you see an insect that flies, jumps, or hops, then you know it's not a bed bug. Um, they strictly just crawl around, they wedge themselves into little nooks and crannies. So whether that be in couches or beds, uh, people's luggage, um, airplane overhead bins, they go hop from, or not hop, but they go from luggage to luggage in there and you can transport them that way. Um, they're also adaptable. So as the common name suggests, a bed bug um, is going to be most likely found in a bed or near a bed. Uh, but if you have, say in like an apartment setting or in a home setting, if you have a occupant that's a third shifter, um, so they sleep during the uh, day and are up at, up at night, the bed bug will adapt to that and will be feeding during the day and go to sleep um, go to sleep during the day and they'll be up at night. Uh, and it will also switch uh, areas to wherever that meal is. So if a person hangs out or sleeps more in a recliner rather than the bed, then they're going to migrate over to that recliner instead. So it's not just exclusive to that, to that bed as the name suggests. It will it'll find wherever the person is. And then public health implications. Um, there's no direct uh, transfer of disease at least known from a bed bug bite. However, the reaction, the secondary uh, reaction that a person would get from the bite, um, similar to like a mosquito bite, um, for those reasons though, as to why the reaction happens, um, you could end up scratching it and causing a secondary infection. So that could be one um, implication of a bed bug bite. There's also insomnia and that goes in along with anxiety. Uh, just for the fact of having them in your house or potentially having them in your house. I'll tell you when I was filling those little tubes yesterday, even though they're dead, you kind of kind of start itching yourself. You know, they, they definitely have some anxiety um, that they give off. But that's kind of um, the basic life cycle. So once they get to the adults, then they lay the eggs and move forward. So I have two videos here. Um, I did have videos. There we go. So this one is a it's a silent film, uh, but the importance of this video is you get to see um, a lot of those instar stages and the adults uh, moving. So you get to see their locomotion and what they look like. Uh, some of these are fed adults and some of them are unfed. So this is just a uh, male and female copulation. So once that skips forward. So here we have um, different sizes um, and they'll be kind of opaque or, or translucent like that one that just went by. So it didn't have a blood meal and once it has a blood meal it gets a little red black spot in it. And then all of the uh, brown dots on that piece of cardboard is the uh, fecal staining or fecal ticking. So as they eat, they defecate when they're walking by and that, those are signs that you have an infestation if you see that on your um, equipment or, or bedding. So again, another angle, but varying sizes obviously from your adults to some of your nymphs. And then here are the eggs. There's three of those cylindrical uh, eggs. So that's basically it uh, for that video, but just kind of a different perspective than static pictures. And then this one, um, this one has sound, but uh, the speakers here aren't the greatest. The importance of this video is just basically to show how they feed 
and the mechanism on, on how they do so. Use baking soda to slow fat bugs from your entire home. Oops. So they start out real flat, too, and they're flat from uh, top to bottom. And as it feeds, um, you don't feel it or anything like that, otherwise you'd, you'd wipe it off. And it takes about three minutes for it to do a full meal. Uh, but this whole abdomen just starts filling, filling. And I can try to move this video forward. Injected into your body in their saliva contains a cocktail of chemicals that basically act and uh, yeah she'll you know lay her eggs they'll hatch out and they'll just start reproducing you know they'll lay about three eggs in a day and that's them. about the full so size of a full meal after it's back, done you know because there are more international travelers we're getting more bed bugs in this country that's the reason why they So again, you can uh, search on YouTube for um, various different videos. There's a ton of information out there. Um, and even like pest control operators, they'll put um, inspection techniques. I'll go over some of these, but um, there's just a plethora of information and, and more videos to watch. Um, but to continue on with identification, there's a lot of lookalikes for a bed bug. Um, so up here, this is common in a hotel, the, the carpet beetle. Um, I've gone on a few complaints for bed bug inspections and it turns out that this is what the person had saw. Uh, they're really bristly and hairy whereas the bed bug is not, uh, a little bit smaller. The flea, um, like how I had said the bed bug is flat this way, the flea is flat this way. Uh, so from side to side rather than top to down. And fleas hop, so that's another indication that you don't have a bed bug, you've got something different. Um, cockroaches, so cockroach nymphs up here and the uh, bed bug nymph are similar in, in coloration. Uh, cockroaches will have a vertical, um, like a racing stripe going from uh, head, head to bottom and they also have really long antenna. Um, so if you've got those, you still have a problem, <laughs> you just don't have bed bugs, uh, but it would be a, just a different approach to carry, taking care of those. Um, down here, these are a little more far-fetched, but uh, like a maple seed, a sorrel seed, or lint. Um, again, when there's, there's a paranoia to bed bugs, so if a customer thinks that they, that's what they have, they may automatically, yep, it was a bed bug, but you can look further into it. Um, and the best, the best comparison uh, would be an apple seed, as to uh, if you're explaining to someone who's never seen a bed bug, uh, apple seed and, and an adult bed bug are very close both in size and that color. So those are always good examples. Um, if it already wasn't bad enough, there's also bat bugs and swallow bugs, um, which if their host isn't available, they would uh, go after a human as well. Um, they look extremely similar to the bed bug, which is in the center here. Um, regardless if you have any of those, it's, it's an issue to take care of. Um, if you're completely stumped with whatever you have, um, you can send the insect or even a, a picture of it via email to the UW um, Insect Diagnostic Lab and they will key out what that insect is. Um, I don't believe there's a cost, at least there's nothing um, advertised on their website, but if you just do a search uh, UW Extension Bug, you'll get the URL for this web page. Um, but you can do a sample submission form either there or there um, and you can fill it out, put it into a small vial, kind of like what I have, or a little uh, plastic bag with some cotton around it just to protect that insect when you send it in, or just snap a picture with your phone and email it over as well. But they'll, they'll help you out with identifying. So prevention, um, kind of three things I'm going to cover with prevention is, is knowledge, um, physical barriers or exclusion, and then monitoring. 
so those are kind of the three basic ideas for prevention, preventing that, that uh, bed bug outbreak or inf infestation. Um, I always get kind of nervous when I'm on an inspection. I hear we've never had bed bugs, especially at like a large hotel. Um, I don't believe it. <laughs> I think they've had to have dealt with it at some point in time. Um, but there's this, this stigma um, that you've, you never want to have bed bugs or you don't want to talk about it. But it's, it's inevitable that at some point some hotel is going to get these. Um, and even at the campground level too, that may happen as well. Again, you don't have as many uh, rooms that you provide as, as a hotel, but it still is a possibility. Um, so if, as far as knowledge, it doesn't do you much good if you're the only person that, that holds that knowledge. So sharing with your staff um, and getting them involved with what to look for, um, anything that is a red flag to them so that they escalate it up to you and then you can move it up to a uh, pest control operator if need be. Um, so with that being said, you know, what's the staff's course of action if they find a bed bug or something that looks like a bed bug? Do they just ignore it? Do they um, alert someone? What happens with that? And then do you utilize a, a professional pest control company? They're going to be the experts um, as far as uh, bed bug behavior and where they're going to hang out in your facility um, and the proper techniques for getting rid of them. So definitely want to partner with a professional pest control company if, if possible. Uh, physical barriers, so something as simple as um, physically removing the insect is your, your best bet. So um, vacuuming or using uh, lint rollers, because those can get the eggs or some of those smaller nymphs if you come across uh, a, a bed bug in your, in your facility. Those are going to be your, your first step and easiest step to get rid of the actual animal itself. Um, other items for prevention, in a room setting, you can do outlet and switch uh, covers. So that's going to prevent um, the insect from getting into the outlet and behind the wall and moving into the adjacent room, if that were the case. Uh, mattress and casement covers, um, they're waterproof, um, they zip up, and they protect from the insects from getting into the mattress and ruining that mattress you know, protects your investment. Um, more common in a motel, but, you know, they're only uh, one tear or a burn uh, from being, you know, garbage at that point. You want to make sure that the integrity of that mattress um, stays. So you want to occasionally inspect those as well. Um, passive, so on to monitoring. Um, passive monitoring is going to be uh, just like what it says, it's, it's passive. You're not really luring the bed bug there. You're not trying to attract it. It's just uh, a trap or so out there and you're checking for activity. So the one on the left, the Pactite passive monitor, um, it gets stuck on a uh, headboard or under the uh, box spring. And as the bed bug goes into this um, black center, which is basically cardboard is what it looks like from the side. And they like tight, dark places, so they'll go and squeeze into there. As they're going across this white border, they will defecate and make those black spots. So it's a quick check as of, you know, if there's turnover or um, you're doing an inspection of the room, you can just take, take a look from afar. If you see black spots, then you want to investigate further. If you don't see anything, then you know that nothing has passed through that, that area. It's a pretty simple, easy concept. Um, the other one, the pitfalls. What's nice about these is it gives directionality. So if you've got something on that inside, that, then you know it's coming off the bed or whatever you're putting that pitfall on. If it's in the outside well, then you know it's coming from the outside attracted to the bed. So you get a little directionality um, with that device. Um, this is an active monitor. So it will actually produce CO2, uh, which is what the bed bugs are attracted to, kind of like a mosquito. Um, that's how they find their host. So this one is more of a lure or an active trap that is um, emitting something that is attracting the bed bug and hoping that the bed bug will come towards it. So with um, monitoring, kind of the proactive approach, um, you have a staff and yourself now are going to be educated on bed bugs. Um, 
and you'll hopefully be partnering with a professional pest control company. Um, the in-house inspections, or, yep, what was I getting at here? So in-house inspections and monitoring during guest turnover, you'd be doing on a regular basis, and then also record keeping. So you'd see if um, there's rooms that you keep getting some kind of activity and you've done XYZ and it's still not working. Well, then you have to go back to the drawing board and find something different. But keeping all of the records um, will help you out on, on finding what works and what doesn't. And maybe there's seasonality to when they pop up and when they go away. Um, on the reactive approach, if you just kind of push it off and let it, let it grow, um, it can get quite expensive to the tune of four to six hundred dollars, four to five hundred dollars per room for heat treatment, which is going to be the most effective to get rid of a bed bug. And it can last, uh, it takes about six to eight hours to get that treatment done. So um, conducting the complaint investigation. So if you were to get a complaint from a customer or um, from your staff, uh, this is how we do it at, at the state for an inspection. Um, but it takes about 30 minutes per room. Uh, really, we're focusing on the bed area and um, taking off all the sheets and, and flipping the mattresses and those things. It takes about a half hour. Um, camera and flashlight. Flashlight is key to have. Um, obviously, you saw with some of those small, that small instar uh, stage, it's pretty hard to see these things. Um, forceps, if you don't want to pick it up, pick it up. so tweezers. Um, specimen container is something to kind of corral it and uh, get it out of that area. And then uh, PPE, uh, so personal protection equipment. Um, it doesn't hurt to get some boot covers, um, so, oops, some gloves, coveralls if you're really paranoid about bringing it back in. Uh, but you want to protect yourself in your other rooms. You don't want to track this throughout your facility or take it back home to, with you. Um, so that's, that's key, at least boot covers. That's usually what I wear when I go into these inspections. Um, just because the eggs and uh, little things can get caught on your shoelaces and now you're tracking it around. Um, so where are you looking for bed bugs? Kind of within five to 10 feet of uh, the sleeping area. So again, like I said, with adaptability, if couch and chair is kind of the hangout place of that room, maybe that would be your focus of where you're, you're putting your attention. Um, but the size of the bed bug on this diagram corresponds to where it's most likely going to be found. So you have your largest bed bug on the mattress and box spring, and your smallest ones are going to be kind of in your baseboard um, areas or on outlets or on dressers. So the main focus is going to be that bed. And the red flags are the things you're looking for, um, are obviously live or dead insects, uh, those skin casts or those sheddings. So uh, each time they eat, uh, moving from uh, first instar to adult, they're going to be shedding off that casting. Uh, the fecal staining or ticking, so the one on the right is a really bad infestation of a bed frame, uh, but you're looking for those black uh, ticking and dark spots. And then lastly would be the, would be the eggs, uh, but again those are the size of uh, three grains of salt, so they're, and they're translucent, so they're very hard to see. Um, so when you come across the bed, uh, starting out at the, at the beginning here, basically you're just pulling off layer by layer, kind of like an onion. Um, and it helps if you have another person on the opposite side of the bed too, um, just to make sure that you're covering everything as you're peeling back the sheets and the um, uh, bed spreads. So pull back the first layer of sheets, uh, scan the whole bed um, from head to toe. Um, pillowcase, taking that off, sometimes you'll find them right in the pillow. Um, then you can kind of stop there and, and know that you have bed bugs in that room. Uh, take off that top sheet, again scanning from top to bottom, taking off the bedspread or the fitted sheet, bedspread, and then um, I've put these pictures in here of where you would likely find them. I didn't actually see these bed bugs here. Um, but any of those uh, folds or seams on the mattress is really where you want to pay attention to. So again, in the bottom there, uh, another good place for them. Um, then you flip the mattress up and you take a look at the whole bottom side. And then especially the box springs. So box springs 
um, is where I find them most, most often when I'm doing an inspection uh, for them. And it's gonna be in that upper half on the box spring. So taking off the bed skirt, again, any kind of folds um, or areas of that sort you wanna take a look at. Um, the corners of the mattresses have those plastic covers or protective covers. Uh, that's a great place for them to wedge themselves into. Um, this is on the bottom of a box spring. It has this kind of black felt and uh, it's all stapled. There's a lot of uh, waves and, and areas for them to also go as well. And then the box, box frame or a bed frame itself um, in the wood, in the corners, anything that's small that can harbor. Uh, this is with the uh, headboard off. The um, support, even on the back of the headboard, they can be back there. Um, nightstands, pulling out drawers and taking a look at the rails for skin casts or, or bugs, bugs themselves. So if you do find uh, bed bugs, then you want to perform a clover leaf inspection, which I'll go over in the next slide. Uh, hardware store sprays and powders and things really don't work. They're not very effective. Um, so you may just be wasting your money or pushing them into a different room by using those. Uh, so you really want to partner with your professional pest control company. Um, if you don't find them, then great opportunity to just keep monitoring, make sure that you know you uh, maybe it's just a false false complaint or they misidentified something. But it doesn't hurt to just keep monitoring. Uh, this was a headline where someone had bed bugs in their apartment, so they used alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and was trying to like torch them, and ended up burning the whole home. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nah, <laughs> lawsuits. Yeah, she got, she got <laughs> I should probably did get rid of them. Yeah, along with uh, ten other people's stuff. Um, so this is a clover leaf inspection. So this would be more. Um, more common, I guess, in a hotel setting. But if, say, this is your uh, epicenter, that's where you found the bed bugs, you've got a 20% chance of finding them in the adjacent rooms on the same floor and 7% chance on the up and down um, from, that, from that floor that you're on. So that's where that exclusion part with uh, outlet covers and uh, sealing up seams in the walls, uh, that all is important because they will migrate out if need to. So it's a clover leaf. Um, resources, again, there's a, a ton of information online. Um, even visual reminders like these posters to, to put in break rooms uh, where you have housekeeping or turnover staff um, that would frequently see it just as, as a reminder is good for them. Uh, talk with them during employee orientation or on uh, um, annual meetings. And then even the pest control operator themselves uh, can come out and, and show staff of where, where to look for these uh, bed bugs. Um, CDC, EPA, uh, Bed Bug Central, those three are pretty good uh, resources. A lot of um, flyers, videos, uh, quick fact sheets, those type of things. So now you know uh, where to look for bed bugs and how to find them, you know what they look like. Um, hopefully you can start an integrated pest management uh, control plan into your daily operations and then um, as always make sure you protect yourself so you're not transporting this into other areas of your facility or taking it home with you. But that's all I have. Any questions regarding bed bugs or dat cap or lodging or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Home? Yeah. Yeah, that uh, video with, okay. yep, the video with um, the sound, but the speakers weren't very good. That second video I'd played, there was a part in there where they said possibly the explosion of, of bed bugs being more um, uh, evident now is because of secondhand furniture and people bringing that home from, from thrift stores. Okay. But yeah, they can definitely be in anything. They're hitchhikers. Yeah, that's kind of the same, yeah. If you haven't had them yet, that's good. But. Heat treat versus chemical. Um, heat treat is gonna be the most effective, is what. Caution with that. It is if you don't have um, tongue and groove. We have tongue and groove. We've had to have the same little, it's only about 
about a mm, 16 by 18 size cabin, three times. All in the roof too, or the ceiling and? Well, it's, yes, it's yeah. in the roof. So unless you are going to tent it, right. the heat's not going to work because it will force them right out to the outer wall. Mm -hmm. And so if you have tons of roof, I highly recommend to skip the heat and go get a guy that does tent them. Okay. And that works for us. You have to close your cabin for six weeks. Hands Some potent stuff. Yeah. Okay. Every two weeks. But tongue and groove don't waste your money. That's good to know. So there's nothing you can do yourself to take care of them if you have them? It has the, to be a No, it's, it doesn't. In, in code, no, it does not. Okay. You, you can do it yourself. Um, and they do sell over the counter, you know, uh, Home Depot, Walmart, wherever you go, uh, Ace, the hardware stores. I don't think Cymexa's on the shelf. Online? Yeah, you may have found it online. Cymexa is a, um, I think it's like a diatomaceous earth powder, and it'll dry them out as they walk across, walk across it. But it's one of those that you can put in the corners and kind of brush it in and it will stay there unless you I vacuum it up. A popper, but you've got to do it every time you groove. Yep. So I've heard that's very effective is that Cymexa. But if you don't skip a spot. If you don't, right. That's all it well, takes. Sooner or later, they're going to cross one of those paths. Yeah. Is that the only type of chemical that's works? No. 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 There's, again, I, that's more for the pest control operator um, to help you out with that. But there are, there are things on the shelf. Um, from them, it does not work. It's not as effective. It has to be a direct hit. Okay. And if you don't do that, it, there's, the residual on it isn't very effective. So it just dissipates out. And if they cross that barrier, it's not going to do much. Although I've heard Cymexa being that powder is effective. It does have a long time residual, where if they cross it, they, you know, it, it will be effective still. What's my favorite? I think just the simple pack type is, um, is just beneficial because it's, it's simple design for one. And for two, um, you can just do a quick visual on it, see if you have any of those black dots on that border. And if not, you, know, you can move on. There's not a lot of bending and turning and you know, flipping things. You can just visually see it. Again, that pitfall well will also do the same if that can accommodate the piece of equipment that you have. Another thing a pesticide guy told me is that if you have 30 degrees or less for seven consecutive days, it's gone. Isn't that, it has to be below zero. I think for quite a while, yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing, too, as they say when you're doing um, heat treatments, you know, you want to minimize clutter, you want, because you need to get the furthest spot. So if you've got, um, say, a couch, that, that center part of that couch needs to hit the, the lethal temperature, not just the air around it. You want to make sure everything in that room actually hits that lethal. Otherwise, they can all congregate there or the small surviving pop, maybe you slough off 70% of them, but there's a small population that, you know, um, made it through, then they're just going to repopulate that room. So same, same thing on the opposite end of with the heat treatment, everything has to get that cold. Otherwise, it's not going to do much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I believe so. Um, you can email me. Yeah, I'll leave. I'll give you a card. Yep. Would you mind sending it to Lori? Lori has it. She has it. Then yeah. Can, then, then we have it for everybody. It will be on. Okay. Yeah. Contact your Waco representative. Yeah, it will be on the Waco website underneath, like the members portion. You have to log in, and then you can see all the all the presentations from this. What are we 
guess when they walk away with it or discover it, what's expected of us to do for them? Is there a general, I mean, granted we refund them, you know, how far do you go with compensation? Uh, with that, that, yeah, I have no opinion on that. Um, I guess what we're looking for, um, as far as regulators go, when you come across bed bugs in a cabin or a room or something of that sort, your reaction is to take it offline until you, so there's no harm to the public if, if the public's not in there. So that's really where, where we're concerned with. How you get rid of them, as long as you get rid of them, that's, that's all we're concerned with. So whatever your method you choose um, is up to you, because it's your business. Okay, how you describe the take the people that are making you aware of it could have easily brought them with them? They're, yeah, they very well could. Yep. But not necessarily. But not necessarily. Yep, and, and it's, it's, there's no way to pinpoint. Or they yeah. may not know that they went to the movie theater the night before. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, or ran in an, or yeah. sat in an Uber. Yeah. You, you never know. They can pick them up anywhere. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of a sick cycle. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Do you deal with ticks at all? At home. I believe Department of Health, DHS, Department of Health Services, I think they have information on, on ticks. But we don't have any regulation regarding well, ours vaguely says pests need to be controlled. You're going to come across ticks in an outdoor setting. Long layers and deet. That seems to help. <laughs> Long layers and deet. Yeah. Anything else? That's all I have. Yeah, it's, um, I didn't need a whole hour, but uh, you got the basics at least of what these things look like and, and hopefully some methods on how to get rid of them. But not all, just to let you know, not all pest control people know what they should know because when we had him for the very first time after 10 years, um, we trusted him and he went in there to um, take care of them and I let him be he was there for a long, long time. Um, and he ended up, uh, and I said he treat, and mm -hmm. he was And so he had some sort of an aerosol can that steamed or something of that sort, and then he also used some bear products, mm -hmm. some whatever. But he was heat treating with his little can, and I thought, when I found that out, I didn't realize, he said, I found one. So we'll be back in two weeks. Came back again, I found one. Okay, so he came back again. Actually, it was a different guy that came back the third time. Didn't see him. Thought we were good. Didn't know there was an issue that was in July or first of August. Did not know we had an issue until someone came to me in October. Oh wow. And so um, that was I trusted him, and then um, I totally bypassed him, and then he was saying what they do. Mm -hmm. said, we go back all the time at the hotel. I'm like, you're a dumbass. I mean, at, at whose cost? Right. Spreading them? Yeah, and other things, but so then we had someone come in, but it wasn't four or $500, it was um, $900 to do a park model. Right. Then it was 2200 to do one house. Grandma was camping with them, was another 2200 for another house. Wow. Plus 1100 for a hotel because she was pregnant and they couldn't do her house for two and a half weeks. So, I mean, it just went on and on. It was awful. Yeah. That Definitely shop around if you've got multiple pest control operators in your Try. jurisdiction or area. Try your insurance, see if it's covered up, because it was against the gas, all this happened, and they didn't cover any of that. Hmm. Yeah, it's, so it it's not cheap. Being wow. Every time I was done. Wow. But I do recommend one thing I learned on that. There's some sort of a um, pack tight or something it's called. It's a, um, it's just basically a cooler. You could get it on any, um, I think it's called pack type, but anyway, it's, it's about this wide and about that tall. It has a blower in it, zips up, 
but the first time anybody ever says they have that, make sure that anything they can't wash, such as a backpack, a stroller, whatever, stick it in there, let that um, get to the 125 for so many hours, so that when you then take all their clothes and wash them, they can hopefully go home without them. After that experience, mm -hmm. that was the first thing I bought. Um, it's six, $800, but it was, it's nice to have at least something that you So you can do all their luggage and everything in that. So that, yeah, that's one of the things um, I never really covered. If when you get home after um, or even at your facility, wash and dry your stuff um, right away, and that will take care of whatever is on your clothing. Um, anything that can be washed should be washed. So as soon as I come home from traveling, that's it's, it's the drying, really, yeah. But it doesn't hurt to wash it first, yeah. Um, the general maintenance of the exclusion is, is helpful from them getting into, you know, it's hard when, when you've got the, um, the tongue, but just any kind of maintenance for preventing them from getting into walls or, you know, caulking areas that, that could be potential harborage areas, um, reducing harborage. So obviously you're not going to have too much harborage in a, in a rental unit, but um, that's going to be more in an apartment. But yeah, that's keeping things clean. Even something simple as vacuuming will, will help reduce the actual bug itself. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank yeah. You. I'll collect my bed bugs.